everyone, welcome back to another video and today I'm going to be critiquing my very own sketches from when I was a grad all the way till now. If you've been watching my previous videos and you've been thinking wow this guy's sketches are so good, trust me it's taken me a long time to get to where I am today and I still wouldn't consider myself that amazing at sketching. What I want this video to show you is that you can start off being pretty bad at sketching or pretty intimidated by sketching and drawing but with you know a lot of practice you can get pretty good. Drawing and sketching doesn't really come naturally to me and I'm pretty sure it probably doesn't come naturally to quite a lot of people. And from university, especially from my university, they didn't really emphasise sketching at all. So it might come to a shock to some people that when they go into an industry that they actually need to draw and sketch. I copied other experienced engineer styles and also looked at quite a lot of different architects type of styles you know as you work with them you kind of see how they draw what the style is and architects tend to have a very similar style I think that's just kind of how they're all taught but the way that they draw is really really good and I think drawing from their technique and some other engineers that's how I developed my own kind of style the most important thing is just to keep practicing little and often and you'll get there eventually if you find this video helpful, please consider liking and subscribing. I want to show you some sketches which I did as a graduate and then I'll move on to sort of how I developed kind of my own style and hopefully this will give you some confidence that with practice it can definitely improve. I'm not saying that my sketches are amazing but I think it's fair to say that it's definitely improved a lot over time. Again this is a, another marker, my, it looks like my one of my first attempts at a detail and yeah it looks pretty pretty bad i mean why is that web thicker than the flange <laughs> no that's you know not realistic that's not straight table's wonky um yellow again is not a very good color um yeah generally pretty pretty bang average or well pretty below average again why is that web so damn thick compared to the flange <laughs> you know that that detail is just so so bad it really it like you understand it but it just looks like poor and this kind of sketch or markup is going to be sent to the client, the design team, the architect and you know if I was looking at this I'd be like wow geez that's pretty that's pretty lame. <laughs> another another detail and yeah it's just just doesn't look look brilliant very 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 basic. Okay so moving on to when I joined Hydrock and when I was working with one of my seniors who really taught me so much and um, this is kind of really where I started to feel wow some my sketches are so rubbish and um, I, I was kind of looking at the way he was sketching and that's kind of where I started to first develop my style which is kind of basing it on on his um, like there's a lot of it which I like I like the thick lines um, but not like I think it's a bit overused the thick lines um, to use some sort of thin lines but generally it's really clear it's really really bold um, and you can get a real sense of what he's trying to show you what are the things that you know your eyes are drawn to and I think that's basically the key is to make sure you get your ideas um, showing now you get onto my stuff and why is it that my diagram on a cap pack looks so so crap compared to his this is where I try to kind of mimic the bold line, but still not really sure why mine looks so much worse than his. And I think this is where my sketches kind of start developing a bit. You know, using these, these kind of leader arrows, it just, yeah, it's starting to look a bit better, a bit neater. Things are looking a bit bold, you know, the outlines of structure is you know, bold and then reinforcement is done in the thin line markup it's quite messy I think there are probably ways that I could have tidied it up so that I could have maybe blanked out a lot of this background text you know I shouldn't have written over the text it's hard to read um, you know you got you know, arrows going over some text you know it's just a bit a lot of thing minor improvements could have made this a lot better and this is sketching on the computer and this was I'm still pretty proud of this actually because this is a really really tricky detail um, this was um, to support a prop for a basement temporary prop for a basement and it was showing how to um, I designed the reinforcement for what we call a corbel but the corbel was 
angled in two planes. So I had to show, somehow demonstrate how the contractor needed to build in the reinforcement and how to fix the reinforcement. So I kind of showed it in stages. So you have to put these bars in first, and put these new bars in, and then follow up with some extra new bars here and then some L bars there to tie it all in. So it was really complicated, but by going through the process, it made me understand how to build it. And it definitely, definitely helped the contractor as well. And this is when I was still at Hydrock and moving on a couple of years. But even though this was a freehand sketch, it kind of looks all right. Um, started writing in capitals, things are bold. You know, it just looks, just looks like, a, like a sketch. I remember drawing this arch in AutoCAD first, um, just so I could get the exact arch in right and then um, sort of annotated it. This is a nice sketch, I think. Everything's really clear. Um, yeah, bold lines where it needs to be. You know, it looks hand drawn. It's, yeah, pretty nice actually. It's got good color. And this was a structural scheme. Pretty, pretty all right looking actually, I think. Um, yeah, text is in blank space. It's clear. You know, thick lines for structural beams, thin lines for text. Yeah. Some details that probably could have been drawn a bit better. That's where the, the start of the digital sketching paperless movement started. Um, still very new to it. I'm still learning how to use it. Um, I was using Concepts app. Um, and if you haven't checked that video out, go check it out. But still playing around with it, still learning. Um, yeah, there's some sketches of some RC detail for uh, Hinky Point Power Station. So it's pretty, pretty chunky bars in there. It looks all right. It's it's clear. That's what it mattered at the time. And then some different details for some some normal foundations. And that's nice. You know, that's hand drawn. I didn't use um, like an aid for the straight lines. That looks pretty good. Um, outlines could be bolder, maybe throw in some color, but I've annotated it in red. Um, everything else is in black and used you know, the right hatching. So generally it looks, it looks okay. Um, still plenty of room for improvement. That probably could do with some shading, but yeah, looks all right. Right, here we go. Here are some of the better sketches. This is where I kind of find my style digitally as well. Um, so there's not a lot of colour on this, but you know, thick lines where I'm showing structure, hatching as thinner lines, adding in a little bit of colour here for a break, showing a little bit of reinforcement, not showing it all so it's not too clustered, you know, showing some finishes here. You know, these are, you know, I'm going to pat myself on the back, these are good sketches, you know, it's clean, it's tidy. Um, it's not too much information, but it shows plenty for you know the client the architect to work with another sketch you know didn't have anything to work with like no background to work with so i had to kind of create this myself and this is a very very tricky sequencing work um temporary works but it's very clean it's tidy you know numbered sequences everywhere so yeah that's a that's a good sketch this is where i really start adding color and you can you can instantly tell the difference color makes you know red for steelwork that's what i use quite commonly gray concrete um still using this kind of hatching for block work so yeah it's clean it's nice you know some more color details you know i did this for the architect um and it really paid off um and they really really liked it they really liked the way i worked really liked how i was sketching showing them you know information showing stuff how it was built and it was really really clear and I sort of didn't have to spend loads of time colouring it in, but I think it definitely paid off. Um, I could definitely could have left it without colour, and it still would have shown the same sort of information, but just instantly when you look at it, it just looks um, so much cleaner, and it just pops out the image. Again, more details, colour, just, yeah, colour just adds that little bit of clarity. It just helps um, with everyone understanding everything, you know, it's without a doubt, you know, the last thing I want is to do a sketch and then have the contractor call me up to explain the sketch. You know, that's extra time. Why didn't I just spend that little bit, you know, five, ten minutes colouring it in? 
to avoid having the contractor ring me up and it just helps um, you know I don't have to show this detail this is tanking but it just helps the architect the contractor know how the detail was formed this is exactly how I want you to do it you know just go back extra miles spend those extra few minutes just making your detail look that much better and clearer it's just gonna save time in the long run right so I just want to quickly show you one of my retired friends of sketches that I did for a recent house extension and man these sketches are so good these are all completely hand drawn and I really feel engineers need to be able to draw to this kind of level not just to be able to showcase your ideas but being able to draw like this and present the information like this means that you have a really high standard of drawing output everything is digitized nowadays but that really doesn't mean the quality of the drawing can't look as good as this Digital drawings really should look like this or even better, but too often they don't. They are generally like really poorly presented. I feel young engineers and draftsmen should really be looking at these hand-drawn drawings by my friend and take note because these really are exceptional and I wish I could draw like this too. I was really hoping this video wouldn't drag on and I've already edited out a load of footage, but I did really want to show kind of the timeline of how my sketches went from really bad to slowly and very gradually improving over time. Hopefully this video is worthwhile as it does show you the progression and that you shouldn't be intimidated by drawing and sketching. The rate at which you improve is gonna be down to you and how much you kind of practice. I wouldn't say solely focusing on sketching because there are other skills which you definitely need to work on at the same time. Like your technical skills is probably a priority, but don't forget to kind of work on your sketching at like day to day. Your calculations and your designs are very, very important, but let's not forget that what actually gets built is what's shown on a drawing. If the drawing output is you know, bad quality and it's not very clear, it's gonna to lead to confusion on site and possibly lead to mistakes, which is gonna be pretty bad. These mistakes can lead on to kind of big disputes, which is really something you want to avoid because everything can turn pretty nasty pretty quickly. Even if you're not gonna be the one doing the drawing work, you'll be working with drawings constantly working with draftsmen and kind of reviewing the drawings constantly. So it's really important that you understand how drawings are put together and to make sure that the right information is put on clearly on a drawing. Anyways, I don't want this video to drag on any longer, so hopefully you found this interesting, and if you do, please remember to like and subscribe, and I'll catch you on the next video. Cheers.